Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're making a miniature MacBook Pro. Now this fancy new toy is a resin or SLA printer. This is going to allow me to create the transparent Apple logo that you saw in the older MacBook Pros and MacBook laptops. Just to clarify, I'm printing the transparent Apple logo on my new SLA printer and on my older filament printer, I'm printing all of the plastic components that are going to create the body of my miniature MacBook Pro. Something you'll notice really quickly is that there's a lot of really tall components on this screen. I'm gonna have to start trimming some of this stuff down. And right here you'll see this tab. People asked in my last video why I trimmed it. It has to be trimmed or else it would stick over my screen holder. And I didn't really explain that in my last video so I just wanted to clarify that's why I had to trim it down. I planned on doing this so that's why in my screen holder that I printed it's a little bit shorter than the actual screen tabs that come with the screen. So right here you can see the buttons and their speakers and a bunch of other components that are stopping the back of my case from closing onto my 3D printed screen holder. Here you can see the mounting points for the Raspberry Pi. This is the HDMI in that I'm going to have to remove and this is the power uh, connector for this board I'm going to have to remove. Right now I'm just desoldering the buttons. If you really wanted to, you could move these buttons down into the lower case, but since I already had the screen set up how I wanted to, I just removed them for this build. These are the mounting points for the Raspberry Pi. Since I'm mounting my Raspberry Pi in the lower case, I can remove these all together since they're just getting in the way. And since we're also not going to be using this HDMI port, we're going to go ahead and remove this as well. If you look closely here, you can see all the HDMI traces are intact. You want to be really careful when you're cutting this HDMI port that you don't damage those little traces. Carefully remove the speakers. We won't need those either. Just to recap, we removed all of the buttons, we removed the speakers, we removed the power input, and we removed the HDMI port from the screen. So if you take a look at it now, you can see it's much thinner than before. We're also going to slightly modify our Raspberry Pi 4. We're going to remove the top two USB ports. And after that, everything should fit nicely in our new case.
This is the air intake fan for our laptop. It's really important that you have good airflow, especially when you're dealing with a small form factor like this laptop. Here I'm connecting up the power cables for our screen. This is going to connect to a Raspberry Pi 4 that's in the bottom of our case. I couldn't find an Allen wrench small enough to take this keyboard apart, so I used the next best thing. After carefully removing the keyboard and mouse components, I have to take this battery off. We're not going to need it since I'm wiring the power directly from the Raspberry Pi to the keyboard and mouse combo, so we can get rid of this. And here you can see just how thin this keyboard mouse combo is. Here I'm carefully removing the power input for the battery. And this is the USB power input that we're going to use to power this keyboard and mouse combo permanently. This is going to be connected to the Raspberry Pi 4 5 volt output. Now this piece took forever. This is the top part that's going to hold our keyboard and mouse. I had to file each individual little keyhole for like hours. Not even joking, like this part took forever. Here I'm putting in the factory keyboard plastic piece and this is going to sit on top of that blue PCB board for the keyboard and mouse. So it's going to function just like it did before but in a much thinner, smaller profile. I had a lot of setbacks with this build. The ribbon cable I originally ordered wasn't the correct one, so I tried splicing two ribbon cables together, and if you ask Google, this is impossible according to Google. They said it couldn't be done. I had three hours to burn because I was trying to get this video out to you guys on time, so I decided I was going to try to splice these ribbon cables together. I burned the plastic away, then I sanded and used like a little toothbrush to get the bare contacts to show. And then from there, I had to carefully solder each one of these little tiny wires together. And I kid you not, this took like all day. I spent hours on this. Like, my eyes hurt from this. If you're ever in a similar situation, just buy the cable. It's not worth doing this. Now to test out my fancy new cable. Surprisingly, it did work. But I was getting some strange artifacts on startup. And since this was going to be a semi-permanent build, I didn't want to risk this cable going bad in the future. So while I waited for the new part to come in, I continued with the rest of the build. Here you can see the hole in the case, and this is where the HDMI and power cables are going to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Here I'm installing my version of the MagSafe power cable. This was a really cool feature on older Apple laptops that they got rid of for some reason. I had to trim down the USB-C extension cable to flex around some of the parts of my case. I also 3D printed this black piece right here, and this is just designed to hold the USB-C extension cable in place and keep it from moving.
For the audio jack, I made another piece since it sat kind of high in the case. And again, this is just to secure the headphone jack in place and prevent it from moving when people are putting in their headphones and taking them out. Here I'm installing the copper CPU cooler. This is the fake trackpad. And this is the exhaust vent for the airflow. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. It took a while to get the cut right, but I'm really happy with the final look of this. Installing the CPU fan. This is the transparent Apple logo that I printed earlier. And this is a cupcake liner that I used to diffuse the lighting behind the Apple logo. Originally, I thought that this would have enough light coming through it, but after putting this in and trying it for a little bit, I actually removed this diffuser and I just ran it with the Apple logo against the light source. Here I'm connecting the HDMI input to the screen and testing everything before I close it up for good. Now, we all know how Apple is all about their design of not showing screws. So in true Apple form, we're covering up all our screws. Will this make it harder to take apart in the future? Yes, but it looks pretty. So this is what we're doing now. This little button right here turns on the Apple logo in the back, so you don't have to be plugged into a power source to power up the Apple logo and flex on everybody in the coffee shop. Overall, I was really happy with how this build came out. It was definitely one of my more challenging builds just because of how small this laptop was, but I learned a lot throughout this process. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. These videos take a long time to make and even longer to kind of plan out and get the parts in. So if you do subscribe, I really would appreciate that. If you have any cool ideas for my next project, please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.